It was so awesome. Cambridge got to host 150 people from seven different countries at their home facility in Chesterfield, Missouri. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how a uh, company that I have that uh, we had reached a point where we sort of 5 s our building and then sort of wondered what, what to do next. And then at the back end of it, I'm going to talk a little bit about some technology things that I use that I find really helpful in managing a business from afar. Um, so uh, I'm an ex-investment uh, banker. And uh, 2003 was looking around for something to do that actually was making a product and, and getting my hands dirty. Uh, bought a company, a uh, wine cabinet company out of LA, uh, La Cash, and uh, they were struggling, basically going out of business. And uh, so I outsourced the production to China, um, kept that business down in LA for three years, then moved it up to Sonoma County. Uh, we were having cooling unit issues with our supplier of cooling units, so I hired an engineer and we started a uh, manufacturing of cooling units for our cabinet, Seller Pro, and then later uh, I wanted to go downstream a little bit, bought a failing uh, wine catalog company, uh, International Wine Accessories, and that was 2011, and then in 2013 acquired a wine dispensing company, and that uh, market is restaurants and homes, IWA is also both restaurants and homes, mostly homeowners, Seller Pro is for cabinets and big sellers up to um, 10,000 square feet kind of sellers, commercial sellers. So, uh, actually, uh, funnily enough, the business we started is now bigger than all three other businesses, and so I'm going to focus uh, a little bit more on that uh, in terms of the manufacturing and what we've done with Lean. Um, so, that business, Cellpro, uh, actually all the businesses have hundreds of SKUs and no patents. So, I'm in a pretty competitive market, scrappy. Uh, it's a niche, but it's very scrappy but I don't have any patent protection. Uh, 35 employees in a 42,000 square foot building, really pretty part of the country, Sonoma County, not a great place to do business, very expensive. Building alone is five, five million bucks. My average you know, salary on the line is 23 fully loaded. That's gonna come up later when I'm trying to figure out um, how to take the, the next step and lean. So, uh, it's a homegrown manufacturing business. There's not a lot of process engineers and in my company. Um, in Seller Pro, we've got about 50 SKUs, and as I said, we make everything from small cooling units about the size of a bread box up to bigger uh, units, probably not quite as big as the ones at um, Cambridge, but uh, pretty large. Um, and I stumbled across Lean probably the most in, improbable way. Um, a company uh, down the street from us had gone. Uh, broke, um, Brooks Polycole actually sent their operation over to Asia and I hired seven of their guys off their floor. They were all brazers and wires. And in sort of watching those guys assimilate and their production, one of the guys was much better than any of the other ones. And I asked my engineer, I'm like, so is Jesse just faster? I mean, what's going on with him? Why does he perform 20% better than anybody on our line? And I just assumed he was just quicker guy. And he goes, no, check out his, his work site, you know, his area. And it was leaned out. No extra tools, everything in his spot. He had a process. And I'm like, wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> so I asked him, he said, yeah, we got trained at Lean in my last company. So I go online, I look up Lean Manufacturing, first video, fast cap. So I watched it that night, and I'm like, blown away. I'm like, I'd seen factories in China uh, when I was doing the outsourcing, I'd go in, there'd be three kinds of chi factories in China. There'd be the Chinese factory, there'd be the Taiwanese Hong Kong factory, a little bit better, and then you go to the Japanese factory and you go, wow, I don't know if they're any good, but I can tell you, I like the way they look and feel. And so I saw Paul's factory, and I'm, I go in the next morning and call everybody in the conference room, show them the 12-minute video, and I'm like, this is what we want to do. I want to be able, in a couple of years, to have people come into our building, vendors, customers and be proud of the building. And ultimately, hopefully have a building that even a lean maniac can come in and feel like, you know, not bad. <laughs> so, so, so I showed that video, we started rolling out concepts, I was sort of dabbling in it, meeting every week. Um, didn't really, it, things, it, the guys were engaged, but I, I just wasn't really clicking. And then fortunately I stumbled onto the, 
Greg's conference in uh, Fort Collins. And then I through that, that was huge because I was then like, oh, we gotta have a morning meeting. I mean, this is not happening. So I started morning meetings, I signed up for Gimbo Academy, the managers were watching those videos, I rolled my desk out in the middle of the floor, started having Kaizen events, um, and then uh, also, this thing's very important, heard about Patrick at that last meeting, Patrick Linciani, and I kind of came up with a triangle that worked for us, and I realized if I'm going to stand up in front of these guys and do these morning meetings, because I led the first couple of months, is I need to be vulnerable. I need to be showing them that if they come up with me with ideas that we're going to listen. So put this up, and I basically harped on this for the first two months, because I figured if I didn't have any buy-in from everybody, it was just going to be a waste of my time. So I did that. Even in uh, one of the first videos I showed was in the nudge area that we were building. We had uh, this foaming machine that had the A and the B. It was really old, and we never used it. it we had acquired it when we bought one of the companies. And I was working with one of the guys after hours, Ray, and I said, Ray, why don't we just combine those A's and B's, and that'll make it smaller, and then we can get rid of it. And so we just, I just poured it in, wasn't thinking. But the A and the B combined just create this huge mound of foam. And I, so I shot a video of that, showed it to the guys the next morning, and just saying, hey, we all make mistakes. I mean, this was a really stupid thing I did. I mean, you can't do a more stupid thing than put two agents together that you know are going to create a big foam ball. It was 10 feet tall. And I'm like, look guys, you know, I'm up here, we're just trying to get to the same goal um, and try to at least impart a little bit of vulnerability. You need a picture of that ball. <laughs> yeah, I should have shown that. That's the roll, the B-roll. Um, so we've been, we've been trying to climb this curve. I don't think we're at the top, but I think we're kind of dabbling in here. And I did an ass assessment about six months ago with the guys and asking them and trying to get a feel for where we were. And I think we're improving on that front. Anyway, so I, I uh, one Friday afternoon was going around the building. We've got about 20 workstations that are all 5 s out. And I was going to do show them some pictures of the ones that, some of the guys that were kind of lagging. And um, I walked around the whole building, shot 20 pictures, and every one of them was pristine. I mean, I almost cried. It was, wow. it was, because I, I, I thought for sure I'd be able to have to go, well, this is where we are, this is really where we want to be, and they were all awesome. I came in on Monday, and I'm like, guys, I'm blown away. This is really great. About the same time, cool. I think I saw one of Paul's interviews with Art Byrne, and I read uh, Art Byrne's book, which was um, Lean Turnaround super powerful book, maybe even as powerful as Paul's. Because this guy goes out, turns around companies out in the real world, and 15, 20, 30 companies he's gone in and really beaten down businesses and turned them around, and he goes in 50% immediate, 50% reduction in inventory, 50% you know, turnaround in, in turnaround time. And so I go to my guys and I'm like, guys, I'm not really sure what we're gonna do next, but I wanna reduce our efficient, or reduce our build time for our cooling units by 50%. So it takes about 10 or 11 hours now on average to build a unit, and I want to reduce that down to five or six. I'm not sure how we're gonna get there, but that's what I want to do. So, this is a really tough, a tough situation for me, or a tough decision, because I love to do things by myself, and that's one of the reasons why I really love Lean, is you can implement, at this point we've done everything on our own. Bought the Kaizen foam, Hadn't cost a lot of money, for probably five or six thousand dollars for carts and trays and things like that. And um, so it was a tough decision on whether we bring somebody in or whether we just kind of muddle our way through with videos and books. And so fortunately, uh, Dan Poss has uh, their lead consultant right around this time had left and he was free to do a consulting gig. So I called him. We spoke. He's only about thirty years old. Didn't really have all the buzzwords that I would have expected him to talk about. But he had done this in a company very similar to ours because they build our compressors and our condensing units. And so I, I put together a bunch of information for him, spaghetti drawings, layout, OT, um, seasonality, et cetera. And so we were giving him information. And um, my initial thought was that he would come in and really reduce time on our wiring, which is where we spend probably two thirds of our time. So he came in, spent about 40 minutes in the conference room, and then we were right out on the floor, and what he did was he walked around the building, 
every five minutes, instead of doing like an in-circle analysis, he would walk around from all the different stations, and then he has 24 buckets, which is a little bit blurry, sorry about that, and he basically defines what they're doing. If it's value added, if they're not in their area, if they're talking, changeover, you know, working on documentation, you name it, it's, it's in there, talking on their cell phone even, and then he lists these, does that for a full day, comes back in the next morning, does the same thing, gets about 120 data points, and then comes up with sort of a pie chart that covers both value added work, the green, uh, pure waste in the red, and then the necessary stuff that the customer isn't paying for, but we have to have it. And so that's what our overall unit looked like. And this is a waterfall value, which shows the, the red being the, the things that the customer's not paying for, talking, walking, um, waiting, and then the necessary, and then the green. And so we were seeing patterns as, as we were going around doing this, um, but it was very helpful to, to put that on the board for the team.